So continuing the series we've been doing on the channel for a while, I'm going to talk about my favorite movie from every year of the 1970s. We've been doing a video per decade, starting with the 1930s. Let's talk about those groovy 70s. How's it going, everyone? And welcome again to the Cobwebs channel, where we dust off old movies. My name is Daniel. And yeah, the 1970s. A lot of this channel so far has been dedicated to classic movies, pre-1970s movies. And now we're going into the 70s. And I'll be honest. This is one of my lesser decades in terms of my knowledge. So I'm guessing a lot of you watching are actually more knowledgeable about the 70s than I am. So you might be disappointed if you're looking for your favorites to be picked, for your favorites to be mentioned. There's actually a pretty good chance I haven't seen them. When it comes to the 1970s, there's a particular genre that I'm definitely the most a fan of when it comes to this decade. So that genre is going to show up quite a lot. Uh, so if you're looking for a lot of like gritty dark 70s dramas. I've seen a good number of them. I certainly haven't seen them all or even a majority. And those aren't my favorite movies from this decade. I'm just going to be honest. So I'll try to mention the ones that I've seen and the ones that I'm a fan of. But this list is going to be a little bit dedicated to a particular genre. So I'm just warning you. But let me just say, while my knowledge of the 70s might not be up to snuff, your knowledge is probably better. So let me know down in the comments below, what is your favorite movie from every single year of the 1970s? That's been my favorite part of the series so far, the comments and people letting me know their lists. I love all the list sharing. Uh, all of our lists are going to be different and that's totally fine. So let's jump into this thing with 1970. You guys probably know by now I'm a big Hammer horror fan and I am a big fan of The Vampire Lovers, which came out this year, but it's actually a different horror film that I'm gonna be talking about. Or you might not even say horror, you would say Jalo, because I love Dario Argento, and I'm saying my favorite movie from 1970 is The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, which is Dario Argento's first film, his first Jalo film. I'm a big fan of Jalo. It's an Italian kind of film that came out through the 60s, 70s, and 80s, primarily though the 1970s. And there are murder mysteries in which the killer usually has black gloves. You see pretty graphic murder scenes. That's kind of what separates them from more normal murder mysteries in which you see the hands doing the killing, but you don't see who it is. So you follow a protagonist who's usually an amateur detective, not always, but usually an amateur detective who's trying to solve this mystery of what's going on. And that's very much what the bird with the crystal plumage is about. But while a lot of Jalos make not much sense and there's a lot of dream logic, which is something I can enjoy about them, Bird with the Crystal Plumage I think has a good story, follows good, likable characters, and it kicks off Dario Argento's career, who's one of my favorite horror directors, Jalo directors. So I'm giving 1970 to him. I love this movie. If you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend it. For 1971, I'm again going to give a shout out to Hammer Horror because I love Twins of Evil and Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde, two fantastic Hammer films. And I also want to shout out Clute. I told you I haven't seen a lot of like the gritty 70s dramas, but Clute is one I'm a big fan of. But for 71, I'm going to give it to Clint Eastwood with The Beguiled, which is a fascinating drama and it's kind of a western but it doesn't look like a western but it takes place in that time period of america in which clint eastwood is a civil war soldier a union soldier who gets injured and taken in by a group of confederate women who live all alone because all the men are off fighting the war and somewhat against their better judgment they decide to take him in and kind of nurse him back to hell and all of the daughters start to become very obsessed with him and he starts kind of manipulating them to try to escape and I don't want to spoil it, but things just go so badly and, and allegiances change and Clint Eastwood is thrown out of his depth with what kind of things go on. It's a very charming performance from Clint Eastwood and what starts out as more of a drama, maybe a little bit romantic and kind of a Western turns into a pretty intense kind of horrific thriller. So it's a movie that really uh, changes genres as it goes and I think is a wildly interesting and entertaining movie to watch. 1972 is an amazing year and also one that might get me in a little bit of trouble, but let's kick off with some honorable mentions. A couple of great westerns from this year are Sam Peckinpah's Junior Bonner starring Steve McQueen, one of my favorite Peckinpah movies, and Buck in the Preacher, which is an amazing western that I just recently saw for the first time, starring and directed by Sidney Poitier, co-starring Harry Belafonte, R.I.P. Harry Belafonte just passed away by the way. And it's one of my favorite Westerns, probably. The Hot Rock is a great heist movie with Robert Redford. I'm a huge fan of. And look, The Godfather came out in 1972. One Best Picture is often considered one of the greatest films of all time, sometimes considered the greatest film ever made. 
And it's just never been a personal favorite for me. Like, I'm sorry if that <laughs> makes people upset, but it's a good movie. I certainly respect it. I'm just, I'm more of a Goodfellas guy. I think I'm more of a Scorsese uh, guy when it comes to mafia movies. I like and respect The Godfather. I would just be lying if I said it was my favorite movie from this year. It's not because my favorite movie from this year is Peter Bogdanovich's What's Up Doc. I just love What's Up Doc. And this shouldn't come as too much of a surprise, right? Because I love classic Hollywood. I love screwball comedies. And What's Up Doc is a homage to the classic screwball comedy and a perfectly done one. It's starring Ryan O'Neill as an incredibly dorky, hapless kind of loser who is engaged to a woman he clearly does not love and they have absolutely no romantic chemistry of any kind. And he is a musicologist and he's going to this convention to try to get a grant for his musical research. And he runs into Barbara Streisand, who is essentially playing Bugs Bunny in this movie. What's up, Doc? I beg your pardon. We've got to stop meeting like this. But she's very much the Catherine Hepburn and bringing up baby archetype. She is a cannonball going through the movie. She gains a, a great attachment to Ryan O'Neill, decides like, this is the man for me. And she follows him around, causes tons of problems for him, frustrates him beyond belief. But maybe they fall in love by the end of this movie. It's that classic bringing up baby structure. I love this movie. I think it's incredibly funny. It's so much fun. And I showed it to my wife recently, who also just thought it was hilarious. And it was so fun uh, to laugh along to, with this movie together. I, I just love What's Up Doc. In a great year, my favorite movie of 1972. 1973 is a tough one because my favorite Clint Eastwood Western came out this year, High Plains Drifter. I got a lot of heat in the comments of the 60s video as I knew I would, not calling out certain other Clint Eastwood Westerns that I'm, I'm not as I'm big a fan of, to be totally honest, but I love High Plains Drifter. It is a bleak, dark, nasty Western. I love it. Uh, and of course, The Exorcist came out in 1973, one of the most important horror films of all time. But a different horror film is a little bit more of a personal favorite for me, and that's The Wicker Man. I am a huge fan of The Wicker Man. I love a classic cult horror film, and The Wicker Man is the most classic of them all. You got Christopher Lee as the cult leader, Lord Summer Isle. There's an interesting thing in this movie where Edward Woodward plays the police officer who comes to this island among this cult to rescue rescue a little girl that he thinks may have been kidnapped or murdered. The movie takes this interesting stance of making him kind of unlikable. And the movie makes Christopher Lee as Lord Summer Isle pretty likable and like interesting and engaging to watch as a lot of cult leaders probably would be, right? And everything around the cult is like creepy and weird, but kind of alluring at the same time, which I think is what makes this movie so effective. And it's a movie where some people kind of question their allegiances watching this movie. I had a debate with friends recently of some friends who thought there's absolutely no debate to this movie. Uh, clearly Edward Woodward's the good guy. Other people not quite feeling that way. This is an incredible movie that I love the look of it. I love the story and the ending is one of the most incredible horror film endings of all time. In 1974, Brian De Palma made The Phantom of the Paradise, which is such a fun, weird 70s musical version of The Phantom of the Opera. Truck Turner came out this year, which might be my favorite of the classic 70s black exploitation films. And an amazing James Caan drama called The Gambler came out this year, which was only a one watch for me, but that's because it makes me so uncomfortable. It's a very effective movie. I told you, I try to call out the dramas when I can. But back to the horror genre. Horror is my favorite genre from this decade, obviously. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out in 1974, which is one of the most important horror films of all time. If you think about horror before this, yes, you got some groundbreaking stuff with like The Exorcist, right? But you got a lot of gothic classic monster movies. I love that kind of thing so much. But The Texas Chainsaw Massacre pushes things in a wildly different direction that is so bold. Toby Hooper directed this movie and directed it like an absolute madman. It is very well made, but it it's so terrifying. It feels like anything could happen. Shockingly enough, it's not a very gory film. There's very little blood in it, but the filmmaking is so visceral and effective that it makes you feel like the movie is incredibly disturbing even when they're not showing a whole lot. It is an indie film, a real just grindhouse kind of thing, but it's so well done and effective. I gotta say, I love this movie, and I do think it's the best film of 1974 that I've seen. Look, for 1975, I could throw out some honorable mentions. I mean, Stanley Kubrick's Barry Lyndon came out this year. That's a great movie. There's some really fun exploitation films I love, like uh, Switchblade Sisters and um, Race with the Devil that are really fun movies. But probably my favorite movie of all time came out in 1975, and that is Steven Spielberg's Jaws. Jaws is one of the most important movies to me from my childhood. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with sharks. 
And I wanted to watch this movie so bad. And my, my mom wouldn't let me because she was traumatized when she saw this movie in the theater. I think her parents took her to see it when she was like six years old and she was just terrorized. And, uh, and she finally gave me the Blu-ray for Christmas. It came with a list of rules. Like I wasn't allowed to watch it around my little sisters or around my mother. Um, so it felt like so built up. And when I finally watched it, just blew me away. It's been one of my favorite movies or possibly my favorite movie ever since. The character work in this film is so incredible with these three leading men, Roy Scheider, Robert Shaw, and Richard Dreyfuss. And it's about this shark, right? That is just terrorizing this town and these guys have got to stop it. The shark looks amazing throughout the whole film. Famously, the shark prop wasn't working very well and it's why the shark isn't in this movie as much as they wanted it to be. But of course, that just makes it so effective, right? And the, the shark is so built up to where when you finally see it, it is so terrifying. For me, this is a great scary movie, but it's also just a great men on a mission adventure movie. It's like the most perfect a movie has ever been, in my opinion. 1976 was a great year. Martin Scorsese put out Taxi Driver, which has never been like a movie that connects with me personally, but it's a great movie. I, I always enjoy rewatching it. I love The Omen that came out this year. Great horror film. And another Clint Eastwood Western, The Outlaw Josie Wales. Very, very good. But for 1976, going back to the horror genre with Brian De Palma's Carrie, which is of course based on the Stephen King novel. I'm such a huge fan of this film. It is a movie that so gets you invested in the story because it's about this little girl, this teenage girl who is just terrorized at school. She's treated terribly. She's bullied by other kids for being weird and awkward, but also her mother is terrorizing her at home, who is this just wild fanatic who is just making her life miserable. And she starts developing telekinetic powers, right? And look, Maybe by the end of this movie at prom, kids go too far in terrorizing her and maybe she gets some bloody revenge. You probably know the story of this movie, so I'm probably not really spoiling things. It's got a great supporting cast of people like Nancy Allen and John Travolta. I love John Travolta, and it's great to see an early role from him in this, and he's fantastic in it. Carrie is just, it's such a sympathetic movie that gets me so emotionally invested, but also the effects, the violence, it's so effective. I love it. And I love that jump scare at the end. 1977 is one of my favorite years in all of film. So many movies that I would consider some of my favorite movies of all time came out this year. Like Rolling Thunder, Smokey and the Bandit, Suspiria, Dario Argento's Suspiria. It's probably my favorite movie from him. Close Encounters of the Third Kind is one of my favorite Steven Spielberg movies. I, I don't agree with the people that think it's slow and boring. I think it's beautiful, mesmerizing, and thought-provoking. I just love it so much. And Saturday Night Fever is one of my absolute favorite dramas from this decade. Again, starring John Travolta. Just love that movie. But another one of my favorite movies of all time came out in 1977, and that is Star Wars, or how it is known today, Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. But honestly, as much as I love the whole Star Wars series, I'm a big Star Wars fan. I like watching this movie and just thinking of it as this weird sci-fi fantasy movie that came out in 1977. And it's amazing that George Lucas got it so perfect right out the gate. He built this world so well and slayed just so many little details that are left unexplored that then get much more explored in future films. And his ability to just kind of trust the audience with that and just drop little nuggets about this world and not explain them will always impress me. A lot of the actors didn't believe in this movie while they were making it. They thought it was too weird. They didn't even understand what the dialogue was talking about. But George Lucas knew what he was doing and it connected with audiences in a way that almost nothing connected before. It is one of the most classic movies ever made. I love it so much. It's still my favorite Star Wars film. Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford, the design of Darth Vader, Alec Guinness's reluctant but very good performance. I love this movie with all my heart, and it's always been one of my favorites. 1977 is also a great year, like Walter Hill's The Driver, again starring Ryan O'Neill, came out this year. George Romero's Dawn of the Dead, which is probably my favorite movie from his zombie dead films. And of course, Superman, the movie. You will believe a man could fly, and you did. Uh, even to this day, I think Superman mostly holds up very well. I think it's still one of the great superhero films of all time. But for 1978, there's just no question, one of my favorite movies of all time, John Carpenter's Halloween. This is a movie that has just been growing in my estimation more and more the more I see it. Because I actually didn't love it when I was a kid. But I love it so much. 
now. The atmosphere of it is something I love to live in. I love this town of Haddonfield, even though it was shot in California, definitely not in Illinois like it uh, says it is. And I like following these teenage characters as much as maybe they're not the strongest actors, at least in this period in their career. So maybe the dialogue isn't the best, but I don't care. I just, I love following them. And the score it's one of my favorite scores in all of cinema. And they got the look of Michael Myers so perfect right out the gate. It's a William Shatner mask that they painted white and it worked out perfectly. And if you didn't notice before, I'm repping it on my shirt. To close this thing out, 1979 is actually a tough one. There's a lot of good movies, but nothing that is a clear runaway favorite for me. Two Dracula movies I love came out this year. Frank Langella's Dracula and uh, Nosferatu the Vampire, which Werner Herzog did with Klaus Kinski, which I think is fantastic. George Miller's Mad Max came out, even though I like The Road Warrior better. And kind of an underrated one is Prophecy, which is an eco-horror killer bear movie I just recently saw for the first time in love. But I am going to give this thing to Ridley Scott's Alien, which actually I don't love as much as a lot of other people do, but that's just because it's like a favorite movie of all time for so many people. I don't consider it one of my favorite films of all time, but I do love it, and I am an alien over aliens kind of guy. I love the tension of this, the way it's like a creepy haunted house movie, but set in space. The xenomorph is like Michael Myers, where they just got the look of it so perfect right out the gate and it looks it's a, such an iconic design you just cannot give it enough credit i love the atmosphere of a blue collar space crew not at all like a star trek group of intellectuals but just men and women are sent off to go do a job and that's all they're interested in doing sigourney weaver tom scarrett they're all fantastic in this movie and the chest burster scene will always cement this as one of the scariest most disturbing and most iconic horror films of all time so that's it folks my favorite movie of every year of the 1970s if you're not as much a horror fan as me i apologize i realize i talked a lot about horror but that's just my favorite genre from this decade what is your favorite movie from every year of this decade let me know down in the comments below i would absolutely love to hear it give a like if you enjoyed this and a subscribe if you want more videos like this thank you very much i'll see you next time